in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen my dear friends fraternal greetings to you and warm welcome to carmel light reflection on the day's readings it's the 14th of october Wednesday of the 28th week in ordinary time we remember saint callistus the first pope and martyr died in the year 223 in italy let's listen to the first reading of the day taken from saint paul's letter to the galatians chapter 5 Verses 18 to 25. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Immorality, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, hatreds, rivalry, jealousy, outbursts of fury, acts of selfishness, dissensions, factions, occasions of envy, drinking bouts, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not enter the kingdom of God. In contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also follow the Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, rivalries anger jealousy envy selfishness many of these works of the flesh are things we can point to in our lives or in our families every day is it not rivalries anger jealousy envy selfishness we find them in our own lives and in our families too as we see the many ways in which we stumble should we conclude that we are without hope of course not we belong to christ our sinful passions were crucified in baptism and we have been filled with the holy spirit so why don't we live this way all the time because the call to holiness is a process and the sinful aspects of our nature don't disappear overnight don't think that just by going to confession that you will be living fully according to the promptings of the spirit don't think that you will not have the flesh in you or the works of the flesh like impurity licentiousness jealousy anger dissension etc holiness is a process and the sinful aspects of our life don't disappear overnight we can be glad that god doesn't judge us by a snapshot of our worst moments What about that outburst of anger? What about that envious thought that just reared its ugly head? God sees all that. 
but he also sees the bigger picture as well. He never loses sight of Jesus' sacrifice for us, the life of his spirit within us, the natural goodness he created in us, or our best desires for godliness. He sees it all and it makes him smile. He sees it all and it makes him smile. So don't be disheartened when you stumble. Don't be depressed. Don't be sad. Your failures certainly do not prove that God has abandoned you. The truth is, we will never see perfection in ourselves short of heaven. However, with each choice, we make to put off the flesh and live by the Spirit. We make a little more progress toward Christ. That's why God offers us forgiveness each time we fall. That's why he generously offers us the power of his spirit to help us get back on the path. That's why he forgives us in the sacrament of confession. So my dear brother and sister, before you go to bed tonight, take some time to review the day. Don't just look at the works of the flesh that you gave into today. Look also at the fruit of the Spirit that you demonstrated. Be encouraged at your victories and ask the Spirit to strengthen you in those areas where you are weak. Whether it's an issue of self-control or patience or fortitude. Look to Jesus and to his mighty power. Remember that the blood of his cross has brought you peace. Claim that peace in his name and get a good night's rest for he will never abandon you. He will never abandon you. Lord, I rejoice in your life in me and in the working of your Holy Spirit to confirm me to your image. May my heart be always open to his call. Amen. My dear friends, the psalmist today compares a person who walks on the ways of God to a plant which is deeply rooted and bears rich fruit. The roots give strength and nourishment to the plant so that it can yield its produce no matter what comes its way. So also, the person who is grounded in a relationship with God will also produce fruit which nourishes others. As we pray this psalm, let's pray that we produce rich fruit, fruit that God expects from us. The responsorial psalm, the response is, those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord, and meditates on his law day and night. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. He is like a tree planted near running water, that yields its fruit in due season, and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Pray for God's blessing, my dear friends. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we remember all those who are celebrating the gift of their lives. We wish you happy birthday and pray for God's blessings on you. Especially Francis Almeida from Nerul, Mumbai. Maxim Aranna from Valencia, Mangalore. Sandeep Cyril Noronna from Bengaluru. Noel Sikwera from Urwa, Canada. Leora Krasta, Dumbivili, Mumbai. Lena Rodriguez from Nirkan. Wish you all a happy birthday. God bless you. Ronald Lobo and Priya Serao from Umzur Parangipete are celebrating the 13th anniversary of their wedding. We congratulate them and we pray God's choices, blessings on their family life. That's all for today, my dear friends. See you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye-bye.